And uh, today, the first talk uh, will be by Katrin Gerhard. She's a software developer, project manager at a Robert Bosch GmbH. <laughs> so welcome to Katrin. That's all. It's all there. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome from my side. Thank you for having me here. And welcome to my presentation about Milea, an approach for small scale applications. And I work on this topic with my colleague, Eduard Moser, who is also here today in the audience. Who are we? We are a small team within Bosch who had the idea to um, develop a solution for the question, how can we bring an AI model, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> and how can we bring a machine learning algorithm simple and efficient on an embedded device? And therefore, we developed Milea. Um, Milea is, an, is a library, and uh, here you can see the shortcuts. Milea stands for Machine Intelligence Library for Embedded Applications. And today I will talk about the environment, what hardware restrictions do we have, the motivation, why are we doing all this, the implementation, here you will get some details from me, and also some details about the runtime, and for the last point, some key facts about Milia. The environment. Our background is the engine control device, but we are supporting different controllers. And uh, one example here is the IFX 32-bit three-core. And there we have um, safety requirements we support. And also a very big topic for us is the real-time operation. And um, in this example, with the IFX, the resources are here. You can see 300 megahertz, um, 8 megabyte flash, and 1 megabyte RAM. But now we have the situation that we have uh, more than 2,700 processes on the engine control device just, for, just to control the engine, and they doesn't use any machine learning. And, um, that's, uh, yeah. So we have the situation that if we want to implement a machine learning algorithm, we just can use a small part of the resources for machine learning. So then we would have here um, maybe less than one millisecond, 80 kilobyte flash and two kilobyte RAM for one implementation of machine learning algorithm. And in total we have Right now, um, about three Gaussian processes implemented, five neural nets, two SVMs, some binary decision trees, and also some in-house algorithms. Why, are we need, uh, why do we need uh, machine learning on the microcontroller? Here is an example of a real use case. And you see here, um, over the time, the signal of, um, uh, so, so of the, the pressure, the voltage signal. And we want to detect this fast rising point here, the green line. And our physical model is just not good enough, and we detect here the, the red dotted line. We implemented a um, multi-layer perceptron for this use case, and then we get really accurate uh, results also in all the different operation points, because here in this example, it's really obvious where the right position is, but in different operation points, it isn't the case. So this is our motivation. The implementation. Um, it's important to understand that we have a two-phase 
development process. We have the software development and uh, in this part all the coding is happening. Our Milia library is implemented with all the algorithms. Then we have the second phase, the calibration. And in the calibration phase, we, um, yeah, it's more a um, configuration and tuning phase. And you can think of a tuner. What is a tuner doing? A tuner is turning some screws on a vehicle and he changed the complete performance of the vehicle just by turning the screw. And he can do the same thing on his computer. And we can do the same thing with Milia. We save the configuration of the machine learning algorithm in one single screw, and we can change the algorithm and the performance then on the vehicle by turning the screw. So that means with Milia we have a very flexible and easy way to make changes on the software without a new software build, which makes it very fast and this is important in our development. To go back to the screw, I, as I said, um, the configuration of the ML algorithm is stored in this screw and that means we are generating a configuration file which is saved in flat buffers format. Flat buffers, if you don't know it, is a um, standard sequelization format invented by Google and it's really helpful ex exactly for this purpose. So we have uh, individual flat buffer schemes per algorithm. And um, that means when we are looking here at the picture, we are coming from some open source frameworks like Escalern, TensorFlow, whatever. We are using our Milea converter to generate this configuration file. Or we can use ETAS ASCMO and can also generate this configuration file in flat buffers format. Now we are here at the microcontroller and each machine learning algorithm is an interpreter. It's very small, less than 10 kilo. And the next step is then that the user provides this configuration file in this flat buffers format and he calls the, the, in a process, in a real-time process, the Milia interpreter. To go back to our example with this pressure signal we want to detect, then he would call the MLP interpreter. And the last step here is two-phase validation. We are validating our interpreter, of course, with a thorough code check, and the model itself is validated by the user, by the user application, and this is part of the development process. And with this uh, model, we are really fast to change them. Just by changing the flat buffer configuration file, we can change the ML algorithm. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, Milea is a library and we have some algorithms we are supporting and here you can see an overview. We have the neural net where we have dense layers, GRU, LSTM and conf1d. We have some trees, binary decision trees and random forest. Gaussian process is supported and also some in-house algorithms. The runtime is also a very important topic for us. And here I have an example of a sensor plausibility check. And yeah, the aim was to detect if data has been manipulated. And therefore a neural net was implemented with three LSTM layers. We had 10 inputs, five dense layers. And you can see here is the runtime and in total, we have a runtime of 403 microseconds, 
which is less than one millisecond, so this is good enough for us. It's, uh, yeah, it's a model we can deploy here easily. But because runtime is a very important topic for us, we also support a um, hardware accelerator. It's called the DFA for data flow architecture. And th the DFA is compatible with um, Milia and it uses internally the same parameters. With this hardware accelerator, we can speed up um, the performance up to 50, which is really great. And the user can then decide if, he, from the user application, he can decide if he wants to have the, uh, the, um, the implementation then in software or if he wants to use a DFR driver. And here is also one example for the DFA. We have a dense layer with 40 inputs, 192 neurons, and the activation function was a ReLU activation function. And in software, we have 266 microseconds, and in hardware, just seven, which is amazing. So my last slide, some key facts. Um, only a small part of the pr process is, is free to use machine learning in our environment, and we have a two-phase development process. The initial model is deployed with this flat buffers configuration file, and then um, the model can be updated in the calibration phase, very easy and flexible. Milia is already used in series, and with Milia you have also access to the external frameworks, open source frameworks for ETAS ASMO, and we have no software and hardware dependencies. And if someone is interested on more algorithms, we develop on customer requests, so we just implement what is really needed, then um, Everyone can contact, ask me, and uh, we can go into the discussions here. So that was from my side. Thank you.